Commodity TV live here from the PDIC 2023 in Toronto. Yeah, first day, first interview, and we wanna wanna start with um, yeah a company out of the uranium space. I would call it. Um, we are here at the booth of Blue Sky Uranium, and with me is Nico Kakos, the CEO of Blue Sky Uranium. Nico, how are you? I'm doing very well. Welcome to Toronto. Thank you very much, and you too, welcome to Toronto. Thank you. <laughs> How's the first day so far? It's very busy out here. It's uh, nice to see lots of investors coming back to this uh, wonderful big uh, convention. Great to hear. Okay. Uh, Blue Sky Uranium, uh, you are very active um, yeah, in the uranium space in Argentina, where you have um, yeah, your very well developed um, Amarillo Grande project. Could you give us an insight in the project and in the uh, in the entire uh, company? It's a very unique project. Um, it stands out, I think, from an exploration point of view uh, compared to all the other exploration companies out there because we're not developing just a single deposit. We're developing an entire new district in, the, in uh, southern Argentina. This is a district that has uh, geological similarities with some of the districts, other districts around the world, like those in Kazakhstan, and they're known to produce very, very large deposits, world-class deposits, and to be run at very low operating costs. So, the lots of blue sky potential with this project, and of course, we also have a deposit there already identified, uh, the Ivana deposit, just under 23 million pounds of uranium, 11 and a half million pounds of vanadium. So. Now our job is to expand this. Okay, so Blue Sky Uranium stands for Blue Sky Potential. Because you have uh, two other, um, yeah, let's call it projects, or Amarillo Grande is divided in three projects, so it's Ivana, you already mentioned it. I think the second one is Santa Barbara. What could you tell us well, about this one? Amarillo Grande is an enormous property. It's a district, like I said. It's over 145 kilometers in length and 50 kilometer wide corridor and wow. it's composed of over 300,000 hectares of property mm -hmm. all of them Santa Barbara, Anit and Ivana. We're focused very much now on the southern portion on the Ivana deposit. Um, besides the deposit itself we've identified four additional target areas that are within 30 kilometer radius of the Ivana deposit and the reason we're focusing there is if we can identify additional uranium resources nearby, then the idea is to be able to, when it moves towards production, conceivably could run it as a single operation and just feed uranium from all the nearby deposits. Mm -hmm. So we have an active drill program that's ongoing right now on these targets and uh, that's really uh, what, what our main goal and main focus is right now. Okay, the main focus for 2023 means um, drilling and exploration work and what are what would be the milestones? Okay. Do you plan another uh, resource estimate, or what can we yep. await from 2023? All of the above. <laughs> All of the above. Uh, for 2023, uh, we have a drill program that's ongoing. Uh, it, we're gonna, about to begin drilling on the Ivana East target and on Cateo Quattro. These are two targets nearby the Ivana deposit. We're excited about the, these targets because they have many geological similarities to the Ivana deposit itself so we have an ongoing drill program so which I expect to see until the summer of this year and on top of that there is uh, uh, we're also looking to upgrade the resource uh, do a new resource calculation potentially upgrading the quality of the resource and perhaps we're also looking into the, pot the potentiality of doing a new PEA as well to because the last one we did was uh, four years ago and uh, the economic situation has changed now. So we'd like to up the, modernize and bring up to, to date the economic metrics on that study. Okay, um, the Ivana deposit that you already identified, uh, I believe it lies uh, very shallow, um, which means it could be uh, less costly than a normal, let's say normal uh, hard rock uh, project or deposit. You already mentioned the PEA. Could you give us some numbers out of it? Yes, so the, we did a PEA very early on because uh, at that time when we did it, the price of uranium spot price was around twenty dollars. So we wanted to know, you know, is this a deposit that's competitive in that environment, 
before we put additional funds into exploration to advance it. And what the PEA showed was that uh, the cash costs at that time were running at just over $16 a pound. And if you include the all-in sustaining cost, it's just over $18 a pound. So conceivably, even in a $20 <laughs> uranium environment, it could be profitable. Yep. Now, of course, we're sitting at a, a, you know, we have a north of $50 uranium price. Uh, and uh, so the economics would likely be much, much better now, assuming the costs stay yep. the same, and we suspect that they probably do. Um, the other thing is that we compared those costs uh, with other deposits around, mines around the world, and we found that had Ivana been in production at that time, uh, it would rank amongst the lowest cost producers in the world. So we have a very economic, very um, competitive deposit, and now our, our goal is to find additional uranium resources to grow the size of the deposit. Okay, so 2023 stands for uh, much exploration work, uh, drilling, um, plans for a new PA are on the table. That means to me you need cash. Yes. So what's cash in the bank? Well, we have enough cash to conduct a new PEA study and to complete the current drill program that we have ongoing. And uh, after that, when we get the results from all this drill program, we're going to have to raise additional funding to go forward. But it will all be based on the results and uh, those results, of course, we, we suspect will have an impact on our stock price. Okay. Do you have any strategic investors and what is management holding? Well, right now we're talking to a lot of companies, so we don't have any strategic investors right now. Management is probably the biggest investor in the company. We uh, control close to about 35 or 40 percent of the oh, outstanding shares, so okay. uh, our operating costs, our overhead costs are very, very low. You know, because we have such a high interest in, uh, in, in you know, in the in the shares, uh, we're, we've aligned basically our interest with shareholders. We expect to get our payback from making uh, making this a big success. Okay. So, to summarize everything, what would you say? What makes Blue Sky Uranium special in comparison to um, competitors or to other companies of your peer group? Well, there's really two two characteristics. Number one. The fact that we can, as the PEA showed, we can rank up potentially amongst the lowest cost producers. The very low cost of producing, potentially if it goes into production, and also the low cost of exploration. That's one. And the second one, that has the potential to become like those uh, uh, multi-deposits that we see in Kazakhstan. Uh, to be amongst the largest deposits in the world. So it has a lot of blue sky potential. It's got the potential really to rank amongst the largest uranium companies in the world with some of the lowest operating costs. Okay, sounds great to me. So Nico, thank you very much. All the best for 2023 for um, the exploration and um, a new resource estimate. And yeah, keep all fingers crossed that all plans will, will um, be good. Yes. And everything will, well, will went fine. Well, hopefully we can have a follow-up chat yeah. about that. That would be great. For sure. For sure. Yes. For sure. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that was Commodity TV uh, live from the PDAC in Toronto. Here with Blue Sky Uranium. You heard it. Um, yeah, the company is in good shape. They already have a big uranium uh, deposit and they are trying to get it much bigger in 2023. I would say do your own research, check out the company and bye-bye from Toronto.